Hi everyone, Michael Ingledew from TDW again with this week's five series. And yes, I appear to be the only one here that's happy to get in front of the camera and do this. So sorry if you find me boring, but hopefully the subject's more interesting than my voice. This week we're going to have a short, sharp uh, tutorial. One, because uh, mainly the subject that we're talking about is, you know, top five issues is relatively quick and easy to talk about. But secondly, uh, we're focusing on the magazine this week and next week getting it uh, finished, polished off, printed and, and out the door. So subscribers to the magazine, uh, you will start receiving them uh, probably mid to the end of next week. So, but this week we're going to look at the five common mistakes in codifying uh, an S1000D project or, or data module. And we've done a course over on TDIQ on uh, the emphasis of data module uh, codification, where we break out absolutely each element on each component of that data module code, and we show you the correct use, and we talk about the correct use, and we make references to good examples. So you can look at that on TDIQ. But we're going to look right now at the five most common mistakes that we see in S1000 decodification, and specifically around data modules and those kind of things. So let's have a hop in and have a look. Okay. So the five most common mistakes that we see, and we could we could easily have broken this out into sort of 10, 15 errors, which is why we've uh, made more uh, information available in the magazine this month. We've done a, a full article on this. But the first particular problem that we see is it almost seems like it's a competition for people to try and make it the most complicated code and the prettiest code that they've ever seen. And, you know, I've seen some phenomenal codes and, you know, I've seen some that really you have to question the thought process behind them. And, you know, when we step back and out of our S1000D project, OK, we have a lot of inputs. We have a lot of inputs which might drive the codification strategy of a particular project. But there are some where we do raise the eyebrow and think, you know, well, what what was the thought process behind that? And sometimes it's because the guy on the project wants to show that he's really understands the problem or it's just because they don't really understand that you can have it simple. And, you know, putting my old engineer's hat on from my helicopter maintenance days, the only thing that was really interesting to me in terms of um, getting access to data was chapterizations. I knew that certain chapters meant that I could work on certain things like fuel systems, hydraulics, whatever it might be. So you can argue that from an end user's perspective, we can make the data module code as complex and as pretty as we like from an end user's perspective, really around the SNS is probably the most interesting thing to them. Now, of course, there's lots of other uses for the DMC and there's lots of other hooks into the DMC. But problem number one is that the over com complex structure of S1000D codes, we see it all the time. Now, moving back on to our lovely slide here, one of the other things that, that we see, apart from overcomplicating our particular codes for our project, is the failure to register an MI code. Now, S1000D is quite explicit in that if you're going to use me, then I need you to register a code. Now, of course, there's that's a failure on S1000D side because that preclude some organizations from wanting to adopt this or if they do want to adopt it they take it and they make it their own and they don't register an MI code specifically if you're a non NATO type organization why would you want to register your product platform equipment with a NATO database so that actually is a barrier to adoption for some organizations which is why we see that, that some countries and some uh, disciplines have taken S1000D, adopted it and made it their own because they don't want to have to register codes with a NATO database. But that being said, there are 
examples that we have seen where NATO countries and NATO projects have not registered an MI code with NAMSA. Now, on the S1000D data module code course on TDIQ, we talk about the importance of doing so and, and why you would want to do this. But in terms of uniquely identifying your data, uh, possibly uh, integrating and interoperability down the line, but you can look at the course later on. So we've got overcomplicating the DMC and we've got failing to register an MI code. We also see here incorrect uses of the SDC, the Systems Difference Code. We see this all the time where it's used in organisations as a kind of pseudo applicability element for complex applicability structures. Now, I obviously can't name organisations, but we, we were asked to go into an organisation after a technical author had left the project and we were asked to carry out an analysis of the data, where it was and, and how good and bad it was. And what we realised was that the author on the project had incorrectly been using the SDC. Now, S1000 is very specific about SDC. And again, on the course, we go through the SDC and we talk about how you can use it. But it's not an applicability element that if you have a project that might have multiple variants of data, the SDC is not the most appropriate use there. The SDC is for slight differences or variances in system layout or configuration, not necessarily a massive complex applicability structure. So overcomplicating, failing to register your MI, incorrect use of the SDC. Something else that we see is We've put this around the SNS because, but we see it in lots of um, different areas. It could be around the information code. It could be around the information code variants that might be being used across a project. But certainly around SNS information codes, we see projects taking definitions that are reserved by S1000D and changing them for their particular project. Now, in in theory, everything will still continue to work. Your data will still publish, your data will still be accessible by your end users. The problem comes where later on down the line, you want to integrate or reuse that data for a project that might be actually using S1000D definitions. So one thing that we suggest uh, when we're being asked to go into organizations to help them is that where possible, use S1000D definitions, um, but never change them. So if they're reserved by the specification, you leave them reserved by the specification and you define your own structures, your own definitions that as applicable. So we then give ourselves the opportunity in the future, if we have to, to integrate or um, deploy to an external customer. So overcomplicating, failing to register an MI code, incorrect use of the SDC, and using reserve definitions in the S1000D specification. Now, we've thrown this one in because it's interesting because we're helping a company right now who um, has now decided that they have a data set and they want to start looking at using the learning codes that are have now become available in S1000D. And the problem comes around understanding what you should do with your iLock, your item location code, in terms of where the product is, when you're performing a task or where you're doing a certain piece of training. S1000D is very specific about the use of iLock if you're using the LC or the LEC. And Projects, some projects fail to understand that there is a specific rule that you should follow. And again, we talk about that on the TDIQ course. And it impacts if you are going to be converting some older S1000D data to newer versions of S1000D so you can start um, adopting the, um, the new LCLECs. So those are our five main points that uh, we have 
extracted from some experience that we have here at TDW. So just to summarize, overcomplicating the DMC, failing to register an MI code, incorrect use of the SDC, using reserved items from the S1000D specification. It's not just about the SNS, it could be information codes, it can be lots of other things. And incorrect use of iLock when using learning codes is something else that we see regularly. Okay, so I hope you found those five common mistakes or five common errors that uh, we are familiar with. There are obviously more, and in the magazine this quarter, we have put together a list and an article on a little bit more information that you can uh, glean from us on errors that are made. Again, it was a short, sharp tutorial this week, so we can focus on the magazine. I'm Michael Ingledew. Subscribe to the magazine. Subscribe to our channel. Keep those comments coming in. There are some really, really positive ones. A great email only arrived uh, last week from a very large um, aircraft manufacturer. We thank you for that. So we, we aim to please. Uh, we aim to open the doors of debate. And I'm Michael Ingridge, like I say, and I hope you found this very interesting. Uh, always open to your comments, your feedbacks, your concerns, your criticisms. It will only make this better. Thank you very much.